Yeah, welcome to uh, Politics for the People. We changed the name of the show from America Finding Its Way. We didn't want to confuse it with, with Tim Apicella's show on Wednesday. So we changed the name to Politics for the People on Thursday. Um, but it's the same show as before. And Tim Apicella joins us. So does Winston Welsh today. Welcome to the show, you guys. Good morning. Thank you, Jay. Our title is uh, Peril by Bob Woodward and Robert Costa. Very important, interesting, well-written, well-reported books. Uh, What does it teach us about Trump? Um, And uh, there are revelations in that book as have been revealed, not only in reading the book, which is on Amazon, I bought it this morning, um, but also um, in the various interviews these guys have had with various um, cable reporters uh, and it's really important that the, we understand that, and the public understands what these revelations are. But Tim, um, what are the dots to connect? There are so many things that happen, including the revelations, but not limited to the revelations in the book. Can you connect some dots for us and show us the context? Sure. Thanks, Jay. Good morning. Hey, um, you know, I think we have to look at all the the, the separate intersections where Donald Trump or his directed aides uh, attempted to um, overturn this election or or taint the election before the election took place. So without any particular order, uh, let me just kind of go down to talk about the dots. Uh, Remember we had the big one, which was uh, Donald Trump's call to Ukraine President Zelensky, trying to get him to initiate an investigation to Joe Biden. And that of course prompted his first impeachment. Then we had throughout the uh, election period, Uh, Donald Trump saying it's fraudulent. And if I lose, it's only because it's fraudulent. There's no way I can lose. uh, If I do, it's fraudulent. And then remember, he um, he had uh, Postmaster DeJoy slow down the mailing system to dismantle sorting machines and take mailing boxes out of communities so that um, for the purpose of slowing down mail-in ballots that possibly wouldn't be arrived in time and and, and counted as, as a legitimate vote. We then have election night and about 2.30 in the morning, uh, Donald Trump declared himself the winner. And he said, um, I'm the winner and this thing is changing and it's, it's, it's the biggest fraud against America. Uh, that started really off the, 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 the intense claim that this election was fraudulent. Then we move fast forward to December 15th where he had the Department of Justice Rosen come into his office and he said, I want you to set up um, legal briefs to support my lawsuits that are going before federal judges. And then he also wanted a separate uh, special investigation to look into the Dominion voting machines and to basically try to prove that they were fraudulent and switch votes to Joe Biden. December 18th, 2020, uh, Trump calls in uh, Michael Flynn and Sidney Powell and they go over a, a strategy on how to seize the voting machines and maybe declare martial law. December 22nd, Mark Meadows, chief of staff for Donald Trump, he goes down to uh, Cobb County, Georgia, and he wants to see what's going on. And they refuse to let him in because they're trying to certify signatures in a you know a secluded room. He then goes meets with Francis Watson, who is the election um, head investigator in Georgia. And lo and behold, the next day on December 23rd, Donald Trump calls her and basically says, you have the most important job to do. And when your right comes, you'll be praised. So he was asking her to, uh, overthrow the ballots in Georgia. Donald Trump on December 27th calls Rosen again, and he's this is the one he says, just say the election was corrupt and, the, and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. A pivotal moment in uh, Donald Trump's fingerprint on how he's trying to overthrow the election. Then we go to uh, the big one, January 5th, where Donald Trump is in the room with uh, Mike Pence, and he's basically saying, you have the power to reject all these fraudulent chosen electors. And the rest, which is detailed in the book, um, Peril, uh, the biggest quid pro quo ever known. And that is, overturn the election electors, and I'll be your friend. And if you don't do it, I don't want to be your friend. So these are just some of the data points where Donald Trump has overtly, either through his aides or um, agency has or himself has gone above and beyond the call of duty of trying to uh, reverse a, a democratic election. We go from there. Okay, let's go from there. Winston, you know, 
Um, some, some things that Trump did were fair, uh, aggressive maybe, but fair. Some of them were unfair um, and too aggressive. Some of them were unfair and illegal, much too aggressive. Um, some were unfair and you know, downright outrageous and illegal. And uh, some were clearly an effort to throw over the whole system, not parts of it, but the whole system. So my, my question to you is, uh, how do you take the dots that Tim referred to, that he mentioned and that he mentioned by, by reference, how do you characterize them? Was, was this a coup? Was it something other than a coup? Taken together, is it a coup? Taken separately, is it a coup? What is it? Well, I, I don't think that uh, Donald Trump or his supporters would consider it to be a coup attempt. They were just trying to right the wrong that had been thrust upon them with fake ballots and and and, and dead people voting and all the things that, that were claimed, which of course, is, as even his own attorney general, who was solidly in his quarter, said there is nothing to support any allegations of massive voter fraud anywhere. And these elections are sound. And then resigned shortly thereafter because he didn't want to be caught in all this fallout. It, you know, Jay, the, the thing was, we knew what was happening before any of this because he already told us, if I don't win, it's fake election. So we already had the outcome of, of what his uh, plan was going to be. It was just a now a matter of seeing, because we are a, a legalistic society, seeing where the system could be tripped up uh, to try and get into some legal loopholes that might have stopped this thing. And, and try to stay in office, it, try to take over the government as president when in fact he didn't win and knew it. We all knew it. Um, the question is whether that's a coup. And if it wasn't a coup before the insurrection, was the insurrection a coup? Well, I, I mean, a lot of people would certainly label it a, a uh, e, e, you know, plans for that. Uh, it didn't happen, obviously, because uh, Joe Biden is in office. And I think probably a number of people finally had to sit there. Maybe, I, maybe um, Ivanka or, or Jared sat down with him and said, sir, it's, it's over. You need to leave. You can, you can still carry on from, from Florida or wherever you want to carry on from. But right now you need to leave. And uh and in fact, that's exactly what's happened. There's been no repercussions really to anyone, and and there won't be. There won't be uh, the 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 QAnon shaman. Uh, you know, he 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 pled this essentially insanity that he joined a cult, and that's about all that we've heard. There will be other people that maybe um, uh, have some repercussions, but I don't see it out there, and it's not. Uh, it, it, it's scary for what's coming up in, in 2022 or 24 when the stage is being set to already have this en masse. But, uh, you know, if I didn't read the uh, poll this morning that said that 51% uh, of Americans thought that Donald Trump had was, did a better job as president, right now Joe Biden's having a terrible week. But we have to think back. This is this is um, this is sort of a mass hypnosis about the truth of what happened. I mean, even if you take this awful example of, of the Haitians on the border in Texas and all of that and the, the incredible photo you have of, of, on horseback, this is a fiasco, but immigration's a, a mess. But even then, we're forgetting that, that the past president, the immediate past president, was talking about putting alligators in moats. Um, on the uh, on the border there. Oh, so, how quickly! You know, how quickly we forget! How quickly, how quickly those people forget. forget! So, Tim, you were shaking yeah. your head. What what were you shaking your head about? Yeah, I have to disagree with my good friend Winston on this one. I think there is a basis for someone withstanding to challenge Donald Trump in the Fourteenth Amendment, Paragraph Three. I think there's enough data points of evidence to be called together and have a very clear pattern that Donald Trump proactively worked to overturn a democratic election. That alone should be enough to disbar him from public office in the future. Whether he gets criminally charged or, or not, I think Winston's correct. But I, I don't think this, um, the finding that the select committee in the House of Representatives will come up with in that report, plus all these data points and all the testimonies that's going to be hopefully obtained through subpoenas, I think we'll have a clear picture on just how effective he was or 
not effective, but uh, how close he came to overturning a Democratic 2020 presidential election. So you know, that the, point, 14th, I, the 14th Amendment, Section 3 constitutional provision is undoubtedly going to have to be interpreted in court. It's not self-executing. It doesn't happen by itself. So somebody is going to have to mount a lawsuit or Donald Trump will not lead for sure, voluntarily. So that'll go to the Supreme Court. How confident are you that the federal court system, which is bristling with his, his appointees, um, most if not all of whom are completely political and uh, selected on the basis of loyalty rather than competence, how confident are you about the political system that would interpret uh, the 14th Amendment, uh, Section 3? Well, that's a great question, Jay, because we just saw Roe v. Wade uh, being ignored by the Supreme Court, probably out of con political consideration. So your question is well-founded. And so to answer it, I'd say it's a 50-50. It's a toy cost. Yeah. So, you know, one thing, one thing um, that, that troubles me about your question, Winston, is that we were all here, including, you know, the, the blue, the red, the Republicans, the Democrats, through Trump's administration. And if that poll reads out at 51% thinking Trump did a good job, uh, they were sleeping at the stick because uh, it's not a question. Well, I guess it is, it's a question of comparison. But the fact is that uh, much, if not all, of the problems that Biden is having um, were, were laid in as time bombs and booby traps by Trump as part of Trump's legacy. Uh, and then Trump is the complainer in, in chief. He's always, you know, he and his friends are always criticizing Biden for everything, including things that Biden has no responsibility about. So, um, you know, they, they've been sleeping at the switch somehow if they vote 51%. But here's my question to you. Just suppose they connected the dots the way Tim has. Just suppose they get on uh, Kindle and order the book, um, what is it? Peril, Peril. By, by Woodward and, um, and Costa uh, and read it and begin to understand the, the dots and the connection and the, the people involved all around Trump, all the things he did. Do you think the 51% would change then? That for me, I don't. I don't think so. I think that uh, people have very short attention spans. Do you remember what the big topic was two weeks ago? Afghanistan. Afghanistan. How? It, it's not even in the papers. Uh, it, so, uh, it, because you have a steel trap mind, you can remember that. For the rest of us, <laughs> you know, even the, uh, I, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's. We, we forget the daily, hour, hourly onslaught that we had to endure. And so, uh, you know, while Joe Biden isn't there wagging his finger at, at uh, Macron and, uh, you know, telling him some choice words in French, um, instead of saying, you know what, we really do need to consult with our allies. You're important to us and we messed up on this one. He's eating crow just because, uh, you know, somebody made some missteps underneath him. He deals with things differently. Um, it does it, it, it. He's a sane, rational, competent human being in office. And because we've had someone who rants and raves and storms about and throws things, that's much more entertaining. The fact that we've come to equate that with presidential is um, a little bit disconcerting and, and scary uh, because there was nothing presidential about that. Uh, and I think we need to hearken back to a time where the president is is a person who is respected by uh, the majority of the population, who is who carries uh, the command of the office. I think Joe Biden does that. That poll didn't say, do you do you respect Joe Biden in office? It just said, which one did you like more? Something along those lines, or, or maybe it was who who did you, who seemed more presidential. Whatever it was, it's disconcerting, but. I think Joe Biden does have respect of, of people, but again, we're at a 50-50 in the, in the Senate. This information from Costa's book, it's all, you know, pressuring the secretaries of state, pressuring the state legislatures, trying to get the courts to overturn, uh, trying to get Mike Pence to overturn, um, and then, and then the, the, the January 6th you know, mob, as the Atlantic uh, lays out very well. 
none of this is going to really have any effect right now. Joe Biden's job is, as I've said before, just to pour baking soda all over the nation because it's been on fire and he needs to calm people down. He needs to get us back to some norms, some regular behavior, and it may be boring. It might not be exciting to have someone not kicking and screaming and throwing things and calling people names. But you know what? That's what a mature, sane, responsible adult does. And that's what the leader of the free nation does. A free yeah, world. Tim, uh, Tim, I want to ask you about the role of the press in this, you know. I mean, to my observation, um, they have me for about three hours a day. <clears throat> no kidding. And I find that uh, the first hour uh, is good. The second hour re repeats the first hour. And the third hour repeats the second hour. Um, is there not enough news? Um, why aren't they covering the important things, the kinds of things we cover, I'm sorry, that we cover right here. Instead, they spend inordinate amounts of time on precious stories, stories of local crime, stories of, I don't know, all kinds of things that are not as important to the continuation of the country. Um, and I think they look for raw meat. And if it's raw meat, if somebody throws a, some raw meat down, they all go for it. And they forget about doing what you did, connecting the dots. So the public is suggestible and the public buys the raw meat and the public doesn't suggest the dots. Do you place blame on the media for the fact that people feel that Trump did a job that was better than Biden? Yes, I do. Um, also, I place blame on those federal agencies that are allowing the reporting of of lies, misinformation, particularly about COVID vaccines and, and cures. Um, this is irresponsible media reporting and our government agencies seem to be letting this go with um, unchecked. And yet their purpose is to make sure that these things are checked. You know, you mentioned raw meat. Well, remember the old adage in media, if it bleeds, it leads. So sensationalist reporting has seemed to win uh, the order of the day because it attracts people. Um, that's why Donald Trump does so well. He's a reality TV star with, uh, you know, craziness to his actions and words, but people just seem to be attracted to that like a moth to a light. So, um, yes, the media has been remiss. And to explain why they repeat the same stories over and over again is because to allude to what Winston said, people just can't handle new topics um, in an avalanche fashion. They can only uh, comprehend so much at one time. So the media knows that, and I think that's why they repeat stories over and over again. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I have uh, learned to watch uh, uh, the BBC, because there's a lot of things happening that a regular American cable channels simply do not cover. Winston, I want to I want to turn to you and ask you about the uh, the debt ceiling. Okay, um, the debt ceiling is a very interesting um, um, competitive strategy scenario. Each one wants to blame it on the other. Uh, McConnell wants to somehow leave the public thinking uh, that the Democrats are at fault for blowing up the, um, the debt, the, the debt ceiling. And of course, in fact, it seems to me uh, that, that uh, McConnell and the Republicans are at fault. But how is this going to play out in terms of that poll? How is it going to play out in terms of who gets blamed for this really um, catastrophic um, cliffhanger that we have here, uh, which will be resolved very soon. Well, Nancy Pelosi said that she uh, is not going to let the government shut down. But, um, you know, when the government does shut down, the president always wins, no matter who the president is. It, 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 generally speaking, if in the prior government shutdowns that I remember, they, the president pretty much said, bring it on. And people got sick of not getting their paychecks and, and, and the whole freak out about that. Of course, they got them eventually and they know that they will. But it's, it's playing a little bit of chicken now, given the, uh, you know, the, the debt. That said, I don't think people really care about the debt. It, it, we just increased the, the, the money supply by 40 percent last year. Yeah, you know, this is all uh, in some sense. Do people know what a trillion is? How many how many? you know, thousand millions is a trillion. They don't know. They don't care. That's not really important to them. What they miss is their their entertainment. And that's that's what that's I think what that poll reflected was that you had this um, 
politics and then entertainment wrapped up together in one. And to get back to your question about the Supreme Court, what they would have done, I think they would have come down on the side of, of justice and, and right and the Constitution as they interpret it um, in a conservative fashion, which was that he did not win. Because you remember, they did um, act to not allow some recount in Pennsylvania or, or some something there. Maybe they did in Michigan, too. I can't remember what, what it was, but there was something where they didn't even hear it. So they just wanted it to play out. And I think that uh, they would have done that as far as the Roe v. Wade, that, like, that, that one's gone. So whatever remains is to be seen, we'll see. But uh, that can't be, uh, I don't, I hope, can't be conflated or, or equated uh, with what we saw regarding Article 14, Section 3. Mm, no, it remains to be seen. Um, you know, it Tim, <clears throat> you know, we've had, um, at least in recent memory, a dozen books from insiders around Trump and now reporters who have been able to talk to insiders around Trump. And indeed, as you pointed out, there's a lot of dots to connect. Are we done? Do you have the sense that this is it? Or are there more books going to come out? And how influential are they going to be? This one's pretty influential. But um, what are we going to see going forward? More of the same? Less of the same? Um, are we going to see Republican type of books come out? I, I think if I was an author, I'd wait to see what the select committee comes up with uh, testimony and documents and just uh, dedicate a book to the specifics that was discovered that uh, point a clear direction to Donald Trump and his attempt to overthrow a democratic election. So there's a, there's a book waiting to be written. Uh, I think they just need a little more information. And, and quite frankly, um, all the information they've gathered so far um, could be synthesized in another summary book. So uh, again, it's so much that it's hard for the, the general public to get their arms around it and really understand uh, to what degree Donald Trump and his, uh, his uh, mischievous aides and agency heads have tried to do to overthrow a democratic uh, election. And it's crazy, but um, there's more to come, I guarantee it. You know, McConnell is, uh, understands one thing and that is timing is everything. Look how he blew up the second impeachment by, by crafting a time strategy. You know, it's really, mm -hmm. it was really smart. And, um, you know, and he knows too, that the longer you wait before you get the revelation, the less, the less of a revelation it is. And so uh, we're, we're into uh, October already soon enough. Um, and it's been a long time since last year's election, been 11 months actually. Um, and, and as Winston said, uh, you know, they, they don't care about a lot of things they should care about. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't care about the debt ceiling, even though it could be a crisis. Um, what do they care about? And, and are, do they care, Tim, do they care about this commission that's now a select committee that's now 11 months after the fact? Do they give a rip about what it finds and what it ultimately concludes? It's like the Mueller report. You sit and wait on pins and needles. After a while, you, know, you don't care. What do you think? You know, I, I guess I have a, a, a personal story that might shed some light on your question, and that is, uh, last evening, I was uh, having dinner with a very good friend. He's a Republican. I wouldn't call him a Trumpite, but he's he's a conservative Republican. And we talked about the election and, and what's in this book, Peril. And um, he didn't deny that there was overt attempts to overthrow a Democratic election. He didn't deny it. But what he said is, well, at least we'd get rid of Joe Biden. And I said, are you serious? I said, so the ends justifies the means. In order to get rid of Joe Biden, you're willing to swallow um, the overthrow of a 240-year tradition of democratic election and the rule of law. And did I get that right? Well, he was he was mum after that point. And I asked for the check and I paid the bill, and that was the end of that night. Because I don't want to sit down with people who want to throw our democracy under the table, under the bus. And if if that's their philosophy, is that well, get rid of Joe Biden and the Democrats, what the hell? Um, I don't want to be in that, that conversation anymore. And if anyone's following Donald Trump after January 6th, I don't want to be with those people either because uh, there's words for him. And I, I don't want to really say it out here on, on air, but I, I just don't want to be associated with that kind of thinking. I love this country and 
enough's enough. Reminds me of a conversation I had with a Trumper where, um, you know, I said, really, you're a Trumper? That's terrible. And he said, yes, I'm a Trumper. Quote, this is a quote, would you rather have Hillary Clinton? It's the same kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, because somehow uh, the Trumpers and Trump pasted her retrospectively, made her look bad. That was the big thing. And then they argued, would you rather have Hillary Clinton? And now it's, it sounds like we're in the same mode. You know, I, I, I wouldn't rather have Biden than, than Trump. And that means that his strategy of criticizing everything that Biden does is working. It's well, working. Jay, it's okay to criticize. It's just like, is it okay to overthrow our democracy for it? I mean, the, 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 uh, the choice between A and B is, is, you know, it's just not comprehensible. I can't understand it because I understand you don't like Hillary Clinton. I understand you like Joe Biden. Um, you know, don't get mad, as uh, Obama used to say, don't get mad, vote, but don't overthrow our democracy to do it. Yeah, well, it, you know, Winston, it goes again to the question of timing. Um, we have uh, Merrick Garland, who really hasn't done much, um, and whose investigation, mm -hmm. everybody was thinking that he could move with fleet, with fleet foot um, back in when he was, you know, uh, uh, when he was uh, confirmed uh, on investigating in, in the Department of Justice, uh, in the FBI, what happened in the insurrection which is the most shattering thing that ever happened to this country. Um, and he hasn't really done anything as far as I can see. Uh, likewise, um, you know, those prosecutions about the insurrectionists, you don't hear much about them. They're old news and they're not going anywhere. The whole thing is like flat already. And, and I, I just, uh, I wanted to ask you, I mean, isn't it true that if these things get old and there's no action taken, if these things are laid up on the shelf somewhere, doesn't, doesn't that hurt Biden? Doesn't that hurt democracy? Isn't that the same thing as uh, the select committee not, not actually doing a whole lot? I'm sorry, I missed the last five words you said on, because I was watching my chicken. Isn't, isn't it the same thing as the select five. committee, the select investigation committee uh, not I doing mean, a whole lot? I'm being facetious. I, I, of course, am focusing 100% on you, but I'm saying the masses are on a TikTok feed. It's a five second feed. And that's the attention span. Select committee, the words don't even register for most people. And the, the, the reality is December and the Quinnipiac poll, it was Quinnipiac, but 77% of Republicans felt there was election fraud. I think that was probably a constant and it stayed that room it stayed that way now donald trump left office with a 29 percent approval rating according to pew which i think uh, pew research does is a is a sort of a pbs you know of, of polls um look jay nothing's going to happen out of this so there's no political will to fight this the, uh, the we're, we're hanging on by our nails here what we need to focus on is sh the work that joe biden is doing quietly behind the scenes, which is rebuilding these institutions, shoring them up, pouring the concrete, putting in the steel rebars, and and hopefully getting that done before 2022, because if it doesn't happen then, uh, you know, and I, I don't think Donald Trump's gonna run. I think there's enough that was unleashed with him that there's so much fury that's gonna come around. The Marjorie Taylor Greens are just the beginning of all of this. So we have a lot more pain where this is coming from, but. I am convinced that my fellow compatriots will say enough of this already. We share so much in common in this great and good land that we need to focus on that. And hopefully people will come back to that because we've been, we've been swinging so far that each half the nation feels agreed every time, every election. And that is not the way that we can run this country. I don't know who's there to bring it together if such a person exists. I, I, I don't know if we if it would become a multi-party model. I really don't know how that happens, but uh, we're not really uh, working it well right now. And yet there's such a If we're not working it well, it means that people aren't necessarily going to vote for Joe Biden come around. 
uh, they're not necessarily going to vote for Democrats to come around. They're, the burden is clear. You know, let me go to Tim for a minute. You know, Tim, we started talking about the book, um, <clears throat> the Peril book, right? And connecting the dots of all these conspiratorial things. Um, and the, the, the co-conspirators have essentially gotten away with it. Um, and for that matter, Trump essentially has gotten away with it. It's, it's really awful. And, and you know, the, the thing I wanted to ask you about is, does, how, how can we explain this book comes out, okay, and all these dots get connected, and more people, at least in my world, understand uh, how very, uh, I'm not sure what the word is, but how very much like a coup this was. Uh, we're talking about treason here, that turning over the forceful overthrow of the government. Um, and yet, the newspaper tells us, just as the poll, is that the number of people who are on the Republican side is somehow miraculously increasing. It's increasing. That seems to be clear from what you read. What's, what's happening here? Well, I don't think there's a correlation just with, you know, what happened on January 6th. You know, Don, um, President Biden's having a calamity hit his desk on everything. So that's affecting the polls. That will change. Those numbers are going to change. Um, if it were me, I would take the book peril plus the findings of the select committee, take all those data points and all those findings and all the significant awareness of how this thing has been, you know, amplified by Donald Trump and give it to the Lincoln Project. Let them do five commercials because no one knows how to take on Donald Trump and the um, Trumpites better than the Lincoln Project. You can't depend on the Democrats to do it because they're inept. Uh, they don't know how to do it. So give it to the Lincoln Project, farm it out, contract it out, and let them let them do what they do best. And that is shed light on the truth and in its nitty gritty way, uh, light the pathway. It's ironic, hiring Republicans or former Republicans to do the work the Democrats can't do. <laughs> well, they know how to fight. They know how to fight <laughs> like a Republican. <laughs> well, you know, a part of this, if I sum up this, this discussion in my mind, Winston, <clears throat> what I get is that although, as you say, uh, Joe Biden is working, you know, like under the hood to do the right thing, quiet and what, what did uh, uh, Arioshi uh, is, is, uh, effective and quiet, quiet and effective, <laughs> all that. Uh, it may not work now in, in the national context. Winston, wouldn't it be better, and this is your final remark here because we're almost out of time. Uh, <clears throat> wouldn't it be better if he got more aggressive? Wouldn't it be better if he attacked Trump? Wouldn't it be better if he attacked all these Trump people? Uh, and really let yeah. them have it, and gave the and gave the public something to see as I don't want to use raw meat, but at least an aggressive statement of some kind. He's so mellow, he's so modest that he's boring. I'm sorry. You know what? Boring is exactly what this nation needs right now. Boring, understated, and getting the job done. And if he wants to throw out some things that. He can have people attack uh, exactly. He has a lot of attack dogs, dogs that can go after the points, but they should not go after the person. It's the person that's caused the problem, uh, not the points. Jay, this country is, is filled with good, principled people on both sides, principled Republicans that have been discontented, principled uh, liberals and progressive and, and ultra conservatives. We share we share an overwhelming majority of, uh, of what we of what's good in this nation. We all want good schools. We want good roads. We want good governance. How we're, our vision of the country may be different, but right now we don't need to be slinging mud at back at Donald Trump because he is a master at all of that. And he doesn't need any more oxygen than he's getting right now. We need to focus on building back better, as Joe Biden has said. And we've got a lot of different areas we can focus on, given Donald Trump isn't one of the things we need to do. Yeah, we'll see about infrastructure, won't we? We'll see. <clears throat> Tim, uh, your last comment, and I hope you, you know, discussed the same point that Winston was discussing, namely, shouldn't Joe Biden be raising his voice? Well, you know, Joe Biden reminds me, uh, not that I know him personally, but uh, Calvin Coolidge, they used to call him Cool Cow. When the nation was in crisis, economic crisis, uh, Coolidge was just, you know, just not even there. I mean, he was trying to get things done, but, you know, it just was so um, calm about it that uh, nothing really got done. And, and, and Joe Biden needs to roll up his sleeves. And if he can't do it, 
I think he can, but if he can't do it, uh, farm it out to the Lincoln Project. Let them, let them be his foil. Although he has the bully pulpit and Trump knew how to use the bully pulpit like nobody's business. He was very effective at it. Um, you know, maybe Joe Biden should take a page out of Donald Trump's book and use that bully pulpit and use it for the common good, for the, the preservation of democracy, for the preservation of the rule of law, and to ensure that the 2024 election is not going to be um, overturned out of, you know, people who want to see this, this turned under, our, our, our democracy turned under. So that's what Joe Biden could do, and he can start doing it now, not later. Okay, um, <clears throat> I can't resist one more question. <clears throat> Give us a, a week's prediction. We used to ask this question early on. Uh, Tim, what's going to happen in the next week? Okay, well, the odds are way against me. I think uh, the progressive Democrats and the centrist Democrats come to an understanding about the infrastructure bill and they get something done. It will not be 3.5 trillion, I guarantee you, but it may be around 1.75, maybe as high as 2 trillion, but I, I'm gonna put the number about 1.75 1.75 on that second infrastructure bill. They'll get it done. Okay, and, and Winston, your prediction for the next week? Okay, I think Joe Biden's probably watching the show and he's gonna take some advice from it. And uh, what we have is a, is a kindly, good, moral authority figure, grandfatherly, if you will, um, who can stand up and just say it how it is. Uh, your, your, your prediction, Winston, your prediction. Forcefully, and that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna come out and he's gonna, and he's gonna state some truths that exist about our nation and how we need to go about solving the problem because he knows he's out a rough week and they're preparing it right now as we speak. Okay. That's my prediction. Thank you. Thank you, Winston. Thank you, Tim. Michelle, Winston Welch. And there's a dog there too. Thank the dog. Thank you very much, everybody, uh, for this uh, first edition, if you will, of uh, Politics for the People here uh, in lieu of America uh, finding its way. Thank you so much. Aloha. See you next Aloha. week.